What's going on guys and welcome to another episode of the Crack a Pack series. Today we are opening up a pack of Dragons of Tarkir. Uh, this is an interesting set, a lot of really good stuff for draft in this. Uh, they're not necessarily a ton of cards that are actually worth like a lot of money by any means. Uh, there are some good ones, the Dragon Lords of course are going to be great. Uh, and we of course will look at this from a pack one, pick one perspective. So, uh, we're going to do the best that we can to figure out what our actual pack one pick one would be if we were drafting this set. Uh, I did draft a little bit during this time, though not a ton, uh, and so hopefully we'll be able to pick something that's actually really good. Uh, so, our first card here is Hardened Berserker. It's a 3-2 for 2 and a red, uh, and when it attacks, the next spell you cast this turn costs one less to cast. So. Uh, I actually really like this card. This is pretty key in just like an aggressive red deck. Um, what's nice about it is that it encourages you to attack. It's a 3-2 three, for 3, so it is sort of on par. And it makes the next stuff uh, that you cast on your next main phase just a little bit easier to cast. So you're going to be able to flood the board pretty quick. I actually really like this card. I don't know if uh, I didn't play a ton, so I don't know if it's like first pickable. Probably not, uh, but it is pretty good. Uh, Servant of the Scale is a 0-0 zero, zero for 1 green. Uh, it does enter the battlefield with a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Uh, when it dies, put X 1-1 one, one counters on target creature you control where X is the number of counters on Servant of the Scale. I've found this to just be a little bit of an above average 1-drop. Uh, it's pretty good. Uh, it enables you to kind of buff creatures uh, later on if this kind of blocks or does something like that and dies. Uh, then you can move that counter over and hopefully make something stronger. Also, you can just kind of pile on counters with this uh, and then hopefully make a good late game as well uh, and then move them over if it dies. So I do like this card, but I think the Berserker is definitely better. Uh, Duress is a sorcery for one black. Target opponent reveals his or her hand. You choose a non-creature, non-land card from it and that player discards that card. I find Duress to be a little underwhelming and limited because there are so many creatures. Ideally, you have a higher creature count than you do spells count. Uh, and so for that reason, Duress just isn't the best. That being said, it is really good if you know that the opponent is just on a very spells matter kind of deck. Uh, and there are some instances of that in this, uh, this set. So for that reason, I'd prefer this as a sideboard card. I wouldn't necessarily early pick it, but it isn't terrible. Uh, Pinion Feast is an instant for four and a green. Destroy target creature with flying and then you bolster two. So you cho choose a creature with the least toughness among the creatures you control and you put two 1-1 one, one counters on it. You can kind of see the synergy here with the Seraph of the Scales, uh, excuse me, Servant of the Scale. Uh, Seraph of the Scales is a different card. Uh, and so Bolster is really, really good with that. Uh, you can really do a lot of damage. And this does just straight up kill a creature with flying, which is pretty good. So this is a pretty decent removal spell. I think I'd still rather have the Berserker just because this doesn't hit any creature. It only hits creatures with flying. Again, you'll probably find something for it, but uh, I'd rather have something that really helps make the rest of my deck work than a just straight up removal spell. Uh, Atarka Ifrit is a 5-1 for 3 and a red. It does have Megamorph, so you can play it face down uh, for 2 and a red, and then you can, uh, excuse me, for 3 of any color, and then you can flip it face up for 2 and a red. Uh, when it is turned face up, it deals 1 damage to target creature or player. Uh, and also, when you do flip it face up, because this is Megamorph, you do put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. Uh, I find this to be probably just medium. Uh, I did see this played a little bit, uh, and I think it was good if I remember correctly, but I don't really, it dies too easily, so I feel like it wasn't the best. Uh, and so it's not terrible. Morph and Megamorph both are really, really good mechanics for limited, so I do like it for that reason. Uh, and if you're just looking to deal damage, it's going to be a pretty solid spell for that, but uh, I'd rather have the Berserker for sure. Uh, Airy Bowmasters is a 3-4 for 2 and 2 green. It does have Reach, and then it also has Megamorph for 5 and a green. So same thing, but when you flip it, you do have to pay 5 and a green to do that. Uh, this is actually just a really good card. Uh, this I've found to be really, really solid as a 4-drop. Uh, you can morph it early, uh, and then if you're ramping out, you can maybe try and megamorph it. That way you get a 4-5 out of the deal with reach. Uh, but this is just a really solid card. I'm going to keep this with the Berserker. I don't know which I like better. Uh, Glaring Aegis is an enchant creature for one white. When it enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls, and then the enchanted creature gets plus one, plus three. 
really don't like this card very much. Uh, it's a bit of a tempo play, so maybe uh, in a very aggressive deck I would play this just to tap down an opponent's creature and then be able to swing in for a little extra damage. But uh, in that instance, I'd rather just kind of have a combat trick. I feel like for one mana, you can maybe get a little bit more than that. Uh, and so not the best card in the world, uh, really kind of not that exciting for me. Uh, Mystic Meditation is a sorcery for three and a blue. You draw three cards, then discard two cards unless you discard a creature. Uh, this is just your classic kind of like big mana draw spell. Uh, these It's usually good to have maybe one of these in a blue deck, but not too many. Obviously at four mana, you want to be doing something pretty impactful. This is impactful in that you're sculpting your hand a little bit, but it's not impactful to the board, and that's really where games are won and limited. And so for that reason, these aren't the best, but they are decent to have maybe one of. Uh, not super exciting though, wouldn't early pick it. Uh, Fate Forgotten is an instant uh, for two and a white exile target artifact or enchantment. Again, artifact and enchantment hate we've seen a million times over. It's always good to have access to in your sideboard. I love that this exiles and that it's instant speed. Uh, three mana, I'm willing to pay for that ability. I think that's perfect. Uh, and so for me, I like this card. Uh, definitely would pick it late game, uh, or excuse me, late in the pack, uh, but would want access to it if I was in this color. Uh, Monastery Lore Master is a 3-2 for 3 and a blue. It does have Megamorph for 5 and a blue. And when it's turn face up, return target non-creature, non-land card from your graveyard to your hand. I don't really like this card. Uh, it's really specific that it's returning a non-creature, non-land card from your hand. Uh, or from your graveyard to your hand. I feel like that's just a little bit like too pigeonholed. Uh, and for 4 mana, at best it's a 3-2. Uh, you can Megamorph it up to a 4-3. But again, even that for four mana doesn't seem great. So not super exciting in my opinion. Uh, our first uncommon is Scion of Ug Ugin. Excuse me. It's a 4-4 four, four, uh, flyer for six mana. So what's really nice about this is this just fits into any deck. So if you're looking to just be as open as possible and maybe ramp into this, it's a great card to have. Uh, it is a 4-4 four, four for six, so a little under. Uh, but it does have flying, so that kind of makes it on, power, on par Excuse me for a regular six drop. Uh, at least in my mind. So I do like this card. I don't know if it's better than the other two that we have. I don't really think so. Uh, I think I'd rather have one of the two cards that we've already got picked out. So I'm going to pass on that one. Uh, the back of that card felt really weird. Uh, Sarkon's Triumph is an instant. Uh, for two and a red, search your library for a dragon creature card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. Obviously really good if you already have a dragon. Uh, but it is a card slot in your deck, and so for that reason, I kind of don't like stuff like this. Uh, it's powerful, definitely. If you've got that dragon, you would probably want it. Uh, but in general, I wouldn't want to first pick this, definitely. Uh, press the advantage is an instant. Uh, excuse me, it does cost two and two green, up to two target creatures. Each gain plus two, plus two, and gain trample until the end of the turn. Definitely a powerful ability for four mana. It's like a souped up combat trick. Uh, I really like that f uh, for that reason, but I'd rather have something like Creatures uh, first pick. I wouldn't really want to take a combat trick super early, uh, and so for that reason I would pass on it. And then our rare. Well, okay, there we go. Uh, Dragon Lord Silumgar uh, is a 3-5 for 4, a blue and a black. It does have flying and death touch, uh, and when it enters the battlefield, you gain control of target creature or planeswalker for as long as you control Dragon Lord Silumgar. Uh, affectionately nicknamed Slumdog, uh, this card is insane. It's a great, great payoff. Uh, huge bomb for sure because you are able to get basically two creatures for the price of one. And this one has flying and death touch, so it's going to be doing a lot of damage uh, to either creatures or just the opponent. So really like this. Definitely out of the cards we have, definitely the first pick. Uh, so for me, pretty easy Dragon Lord Silmgar. Feel free to disagree in the comment sections below if you, uh, if you found that something else was better. But if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.